Hello, hope you are all doing good. My name is Yara and I want to start mentioning it is a great pleasure to be here today sharing with you um, a little about the project me and my colleagues developed here in Brazil with the coordination of uh, Professor and Dr. Ana Beatriz Pegorari and with the partnership of the Federal University of Mato Grosso do Sul and the Brazilian Association of Dermatofunctional Therapy. I am a physiotherapist, a specialist in dermatofunctional therapy. I have a master's degree in plastic surgery, and this is my great and biggest working area. I have my own clinic and also work in private hospitals in the city of Jundiaí and Sao Paulo. In Sao Paulo, I assist uh, reference work with women treated in our public health system that are submitted to a surgical treatment of breast cancer. One of the themes developed in this project was about the dermatofunctional therapy performance and breast plastic surgeries. Breasts are one of the main symbols of femininity and motherhood. In Brazil, augmentation mammoplasty leads the ranking, followed by reduction mammoplasty in third place on this list, according to our Brazilian Association of Plastic Surgery. The high number of breast plastic surgeries seems to be directly related to the importance given to the organ with regard to the differentiation between genders, female and male, and the strong relationship with women's identity and self-esteem. In addition to this psychosocial connotation, we cannot fail to emphasize the functional and pathological reasons, such as the high rates of cancer and the relationship with postural changes, which can also motivate the indication for breast surgery. To illustrate that, I got their pictures so we can visualize which ones are the most commonly realized surgeries. The first sequence of pictures represents the augmentation uh, breast surgery with implants. It is a very simple kind of surgery with a very fast and easy recovery to the patient. It brings excellent aesthetic benefits and high self-esteem to the women. The second case I brought is also very demanded through women and bring lots of benefits for them, especially when there is a postural matter complaint, besides the aesthetic benefit too, of course. These patients need a special attention, mainly in the postoperative because it is an invasive surgery with a bigger patch resection and skin, so she needs and deserves greater care. Next sequence, I brought a mastopexy case to illustrate. It is a kind of surgery that you have a reposition of the breasts, and just like the reduction mammoplasty, it deserves greater attention and care, especially from the physiotherapist. There, we have the breast reconstruction surgery, realized after the breast tumor removal. Those are the surgeries that most involve a greater degree of complexity. At that sequence, uh, we can see an immediate reconstruction after an, an adenectomy with the immediate acting of uh, physiotherapy in the surgery center. Then we see here after five days treatment, 
from her first treatment until the elastic bandaging removal done at the surgery center. And the last one brings the final aspect of this surgery with the patient after 45 days attendance. Here we can see another case of breast reconstruction after the mastectomy on the right side with a symmetrization of the other breast. This patient also was benefited with the bandaging in the intraoperative. Right after, in sequence, we have the second picture, seven days after the surgery, and bandaging removal with a fine control of the inflammatory state. As we can see at the third picture, 30 days after, already heading the patient to a discharge. For the physiotherapist, it is important to know the surgical technique, the physical conditions and general health of the patient, considering that the pre- and post-operative physiotherapeutic plan depends on clinical reasoning and not on the pre-established protocol. Each case has its particularities and the proposed treatment should be directed towards preventing complications, maintaining functionality and promoting a quick, smooth and uncomplicated post-operative recovery. It is the ideal time to establish conducts that will have repercussions throughout the post-operative recovery since the patient has her share of contribution during the treatment by correctly following the guidelines proposed by her surgical team. Knowing what the expected reactions are after surgery leads the patient to have more peace of mind and reliability when going throughout them. In this context, it is extremely important that the education to the patient gets included as a treatment resource by the physical therapist. A good anamnesis must include, in addition to personal data, anthropometric data collection, previous illnesses, medications in use, previous surgeries and physical activities, Investigate the use of tobacco, drugs, and alcohol because smokers may have difficulties in healing, being more prone to complications and a final scar of worse quality or unsightly. Investigating eating habits deserves special attention since there is an extensive literature on the participation of nutrients in the tissue repair process. In the physical examination, it is necessary to pay more attention to the trunk and upper limbs, that is, to assess postural and joint changes, range of motion, presence of edema, circulatory changes, changes in sensitivity, and complaints of pain. Exercises and post-operative care can and should already be mentioned so that you can be sure when starting your treatment with the physiotherapist. The guidance of breathing exercises, stretching, and mobility for the thoracic and cervical region is especially useful for patients who will undergo submuscular breast implant placement and who will naturally experience some initial discomfort. It is the physiotherapist's job to guide the patient on how to adapt to all her daily activities from simpler activities such as lying down, sitting down, getting up, to activities in which she will need help such as closing the surgical bra. Equally important are the guidelines for activities that cannot be performed for a period of time, such as driving or carrying weights. It is important to know the patient's work and even leisure routine so that they are suitable, especially in the immediate post-operative period. This performance is still taken in the surgery room immediately after the end of the surgery. At that point, the body's acute inflammatory reactions are being triggered in response to the surgical trauma. It is when you manage to control the intensity of these reactions in order to prevent complications and minimize the complications inherent 
in the process. Among the resources used in the uh, intraoperative period, elastic bandages stand out. In the approach of uh, compressive tapping, the objective is to promote through its mechanical action, a containment effect in the areas that suffer detachment. A strategy that seeks to minimize the initial inflammatory response as this will influence the next phase of the repair process, the proliferation one. It is based on the concepts of tissue mechanobiological environment control. When we prevent excessive leakage of edema and blood from the disruption of small vessels, we prevent the microcirculation from being harmed and the edema. When gaining volume, it will exert a counter-tensioning force on the edges of the scars, which favors the hesens and unsightly scars, an extremely unwanted complication in cosmetic surgeries. Another physiotherapeutic resource indicated in early intervention is photobiomodulation. The objective is to modulate the inflammatory process, improve the viability of the surgical flap, and also favor the healing process of the surgical incision, which will lead to a better looking scar at the end of the entire process. Here, there is a little video I want to share with you. I would like you to observe this role model of acting is still in the surgery center. This patient had a reduction mammoplasty surgery and also a liposculture. The assessment of this patient must be continuous as there is a whole dynamic of the tissue repair process phases. At this most immediate moment, physiotherapy aims to guide the positioning, reestablish and re-encourage the resumption of activities of daily living, hear the difficulties faced and continue in the process of guiding and educating this patient so that a leading can be chosen specifically promoting a more humanized service. For the evaluation of the surgical flap, it is important to observe the appearance and color of the skin, verifying whether blood perfusion is taking place effectively. If the skin, or more specifically, the papillary areola complex, shows signs of suffering, it is necessary to identify the cause and favor the vascularization of this flap with physical therapy resources. Studies show beneficial effects not only with the use of photobiomodulation, as already mentioned, but also with the use of tents. 
ELTENS, Electric Nervous Transcutaneous Stimulation, a simple and very accessible resource within physiotherapy that also favors neoangiogenesis. I brought here one more case of a patient where we can observe still in surgery center acting. This patient had the bandaging right after the surgery and here I show you four days after the attendance and the bandaging removal. Um, here we observe the control of inflammatory reactions that are much more intense in the first days. The best benefit of an early attendance in physiotherapy is exactly this optimization at the evolution of the inflammatory state and recovering of the patient. And then uh, we can follow with the steps of a conventional rehabilitation in a safer and more comfortable way uh, for this patient. As you could observe, there is this huge job yet to be done with this patient, but we do start this process in a very easy way. Then we can follow with the dispatch of this patient in a short period of time. In conclusion, the role of physiotherapy in plastic surgery still requires more evidence. The lack of standard protocols regarding the approach to physical therapy makes the analysis difficult, not only regarding the patient's evolution, but also regarding the proof of the real value of physical therapy in preventing and treating the complications and sequelae arising from these surgeries, especially the most complex ones such as breast reconstructions. Thus, many of the approaches mentioned here come from guidelines for physical therapy services, published studies, and personal experience based on clinical practice of care and acquired in training courses with professionals who are a reference in this area of expertise. I thank you very much for your attention and you can have all my contacts here. And now, at the end of this presentation, you can find all the references that I used for this research and project development that has been shortly represented here in this class. And also, I leave to you a complementary activity so you can keep up researching and studying about this topic. Here we go. Um, surgical treatment represents the therapeutic basis for most cases of breast cancer, especially for the more advanced ones. Depending on the stage, surgeries for the treatment of breast cancer can be more conservative, such as quadrantectomies, or more radical, such as mastectomy. Both approaches can result in different degrees of asymmetries, deformations, and distortions of the usual breast shape causing negative perceptions in the postoperative period and impairing the quality of life of many women. After mastectomies or even breast conserving surgeries, the surgeon assesses the possibility of breast reconstruction, which can be immediate or delayed considering pre-existing disease, neoadjuvant programming, physical and structural conditions of the service, where the surgery will be performed, allied the patient's wishes respecting clinical and pathological criteria well established by international protocols. Breast reconstruction plays a fundamental role in improving quality of life and is considered an integral part of breast cancer treatment. 
its beneficial effects on quality of life and body image are well established and the patient satisfaction with the quality of life indicators are considered important and relevant aspects in the assessment of surgical success after breast reconstruction within this context physical therapy within the multidisciplinary team plays an increasingly relevant role in preventing complications recovering function and improving the quality of life of patients undergoing breast reconstruction in brazil medical services that routinely refer these patients to physical therapy care in a preventive manner are rare usually the referral is made late or when some functional morbidity has already set in whose treatment comp competence belongs to the physiotherapist then as a complementary activity I would like you to research the epidemiological rates of breast cancer in your country and tell me how care services work in general. Then you research the main types of breast reconstructive surgeries and what are their biggest complications. Also, describe how physiotherapy can act before and after these surgeries to prevent these complications, helping with recovery and restoring function functions in order to improve the quality of life of these women. And there follows the bibliography where you can study and research. I hope you have enjoyed it. Thank you very much, and I wish you all good luck. Thanks.